So finally, here we go, our first match of the day starts. A new tournament begins today, the Adobe Cup Pro Max, the Adobe Pro Max Cup. There we go. We are in the prelims today. Fortitude versus Lawlight battling in a best of five, who moves on to the main stage. And we shall start our best of five. On Concealed Hill, eh? We got Fortitude in the top right, in the beautiful lavender color. Lawli in the bottom left, keep first. In uh, the mint green, wonderful, wonderful. Oh my god, I sounded like Carson right there. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Have you guys noticed that? Carson, uh, much like many Americans, and by that I mean North Americans, much like many Americans, will say words twice in a row. Which uh, is a bit unusual when you're European. This seems to be a specifically Northern American rhetoric exercise. Anyways. Keeper comes out, gets greeted with a Claws of Attack. Good start. Fortitude with the Archmage. Almost every human in the world plays fast expansion against Night Elf on some maps that can be difficult, like on this map. Fortitude is the most dangerous and most prolific with one base play and tower pushes. So that's something that's blah, blah, something you always have to be careful about. Oh, the map title has another map on top of it. Yes, true. Good catch. Thank you. That was um, from the Thingy Cup. What was it called again? Hive Cup. Fourth farm, that means there should be an expansion play by 40. Creeping the green first, Lolite was creeping heavily on his side, he got level 2. Didn't drink from the moon juice before going over, which is kind of weird. Normally, players will drink from the moon juice, have mu as much mana as possible, and then attack. But Lolite's saving a bit of juice here. He's got good items. Not perfect items, but good items. Slippers of Agility. Um, I learned that the other day on Liquipedia. They increase attack speed on average by like uh, 5%. 4 to 5%. So, it's not much, but you know, it helps a little bit. Oh, there we go, boys. It is the tower push. Fortitude, like I said, always dangerous with this. And Lawlight, I think he figures it out. I think he knows now. The fact that 40 isn't creeping the natural, very suspicious, he's gonna see the Militia train soon. And he's got Huntresses already coming, double Ancient of War Hunts, oh my god. Lawlight is super, mega, ultra hard countering this strat. 40 has to abandon. 40 has to fall back and tech, I think. There's no way this push is gonna work, right? There should be no way. Huntress is very strong early on against footy armies, also against peasants. With micro here by Lawlight also, I would say. Oh, but now, stopping Huntress production for a little while, that seems like a mistake. Huntresses, if they're hurt, can also move to the fountain to heal there. That's a big benefit on this map also for the Huntresses. A couple of peasants have fallen, seems like this one tower will finish. It's only an arcane though. Not even a guard tower, so this is not really a concern. Not a big one anyways for Lawlight. Gonna kill a couple more peasants and all the hunts were saved. Very nicely done. Oh, Eaton could be able to kill off a footy over here. Keeper should be close to three. Gets surrounded though. Can he uproot? Yes. Quick uproot. Saves the keeper. Running back to the moon. We even got an AP in the back. Lolite seems so extremely ready for this. Did kill off the footy. Oh, 100 does go down though. Good reaction by Fortitude. And with the Ancient of War here falling, suddenly this is a bit more dangerous. Arcane Tower does finish. But might still be getting taken out. Not too, me pe too many peasants here to repair. Whew, that was close. Lolai gets the kill. And that is almost level 3. Is there defend? No, there's no defend. So this AP in the main is also very strong. 
But honestly, considering how good of a counter Law is playing, this is still looking pretty scary. Right? If this peasant falls as level 3, that would be a big deal. Should be Shrian's level 2 then, I imagine, from the Keeper. Lawlight's making great use of these fountains. Did he lose two Huntresses at the fountains, I wonder? He definitely lost the one here. It seems like maybe he should have another. Oh no, the Huntresses have now returned, actually. That's what's going on. And we'll cancel the tower here once again. One kill. Lawlight needs one kill. It's gonna be daytime soon, though. And without the Moonju's regen, things are gonna get a lot more difficult. Can he get a deny? Not quite. Keeper gets three, but doesn't have any mana. What's he skilling? Holding on to the skill point so far. Maybe he wants to go and tangle, especially to deal with the water alleys. Oh, but the AP. Oh my god, that's so much damage against the tower. Yeah, no way. Pretty smart how Lola had put the AP way in the back and had it safely there and only moved out the AP once he needed it. But now... Uh, we have defend. Archmage, though, surrounded. It was level 2 in Tangle. Let's just surround the AM. He doesn't have a TP. He sold it before. That's the AM going down, and I believe that must be game. Clean up time now for the Keeper and the Hunts. Keeper getting good. Experience here getting close to level 4 compared to the AM, who never even got level 3. If the AM had been level 3 for level 2 Water Elemental, this could have been a different story. 40 isn't giving up yet. He rebought the Archmage, but they're is no way, right? One thing that's missing here for the lie is a shop. Would have loved to seen a shop either here or here. Clarity's Moonstones. But even without it, that should be enough. One more entangle, and that's the... K -k -k kill level 4, that's it. GG. Alright, this, this time the cam didn't freeze. That's good. I guess. Okay, for the next game, I'm gonna remove the UI and then our overlay should be looking nicer. Yeah, Anka saying suicidal push. Yeah, I think once you see Hunt's double Ancient of War, I think you gotta abandon. I don't even think it's that bad because, of course, with that opening, the Night Elf delays tier 2 by a long time, and goes Huntresses. Huntresses fall off in the mid-game and late-game extremely heavily. So I think, uh, 40... Did make a noticeable strategic mistake there? I think trying to pull through with the tower push was not quite the right choice there, but... Well, uh, it ends with a Lawlight victory. Not too surprising, I guess. Map number 2 is gonna be loser's choice for Fortitude, and he decides on Northern Isles, which is normally always the veto for the Night Elves. Our map pool here is not the newest one. We don't have Shallow Grave in, so it's Autumn Leaves, Concealed Hill, Echo Isles, Last Refuge, Northern Isles, Tight Hunters, and Amazonia. And I wonder what Lawlight vetoed. He didn't veto AZ, right? He's not crazy. Tight Hunters, maybe? Titans or Echo Isles must have been. Yeah, must have been Titans or Echo Isles, I guess, that he vetoed. Probably Titans. Lawlight's crazy good with a warden on Echo. Maybe I can ask him later. But, uh, yeah. Map number two. Gun should be looking a lot better for Fortitude. This is normally a pretty good map for human because it's an easy, fast expansion. And an instant level two from the fast expo creep. This is wonderful for the human. Plus, additionally, it's also a pretty hard map for Ancient of War creeping for the Night Elf. Dude, the goddamn camera. What is going on? Uh huh. Okay. okay. Hmm. Hmm. It is a best of five that we play here for all games today.
Somebody is uh, not joining the game. Yeah, notably, I don't know if I said this already, but all games are going to be played on Netties. That means Happy is going to be playing on a pretty disadvantageous ping, but still going to give it his best shot. Against Thunder, I guess he should still be favored, but yeah, it's going to be a high ping for Happy later in our third match of the day. All right, we try again. Yesterday, I actually uh, got a bit of sun. My cam settings aren't exactly perfect right now, so... Uh, uh, I got a little bit tanned. You can't see it right now, but believe me, I got a little bit tanned. I was uh, sitting on the meadow next to the Rhine River, and it was beautiful. Because it's, it's kind of crazy, you know, I'm inside so much all the time that normally I'm really pale. I'm trying to remedy that this year and not be as terribly pale, you know. And uh, yeah, it's pretty chill. Sit next to the Rhine. Bring a blanket, lay down, bring a book, read for like an hour or two. You know, you gotta, you gotta enjoy life where you can. Off we go to map number two. Here in Germany, it's nice, warm, and sunny and comfortable, but on our next destination, Northern Isles, that is not the case. It is cold, it is wet, and it's even snowy in some parts. These are the northern frigid lands of the Vikings, perhaps. I saw the Northmen the other day in the cinema and I loved that movie I thought it was wonderful I love that director Robert Eggers I think he's one of the best young promising directors out there and I thought it was a great film went with two friends one of them also really liked it and my other my other friend absolutely hated it <laughs> uh, yeah Forces are under By the way, little little back to Warcraft tip. If you see these two buttons in the top right, you always know that we're on Netties. And if you don't see them, then you know we're on Warcraft Champions. Keep a first against Archmage first. On this map, I imagine Fortitude will be playing standard. If Wait, this is not standard though. Is he playing one base push again? The standard build that almost everybody plays is an instant expansion creep. But Forty is creeping the green camp first, which obviously slows down his expansion. Keep are gonna pick up a footy here as well. Found the claws again. A wonderful drop once more. Against gloves on the AM, which is quite a bit worse. Oh, second agent of war. We are going in, boys. Lawlight wants to go all in push. Against this expansion. How does that wisp connect? This is kind of a big deal. Oh, it hits the water elemental and the AM. Ooh, okay. Wait, it only hit the water elemental to get him more experience. That was enough for level two. Not killing the wisp. Probably a pretty big mistake, but uh, Fortitude plays around the last hits well. Gets the kill. Oh, wow. Sick items. 
Lots of bonus damage on this Archmage, but he himself is quite hurt. Needs to be careful. Are under Expansion delayed. This is not good for Fortitude. And you know, on map one already, I feel like the build wasn't the best. The tower push that he was too stubborn to move away from. And I also think this build isn't the best. Like, isn't an instant expansion creep always better? Because the keeper's not going to be there in time. The keeper always starts off with creeping first. For the two, it is of course a much better player than me. And maybe he knows something that I don't know. But uh, it does seem to me like the instant expansion is better. Maybe I'm wrong though. Oh, Archmage already super hurt. This makes it very hard for him to get involved. Oh, I love the scout farm here by 40. He's aware that an AP push might be attempted over here. As the keeper falls back. Wait, he didn't buy a telly staff, surprisingly. What a circlet, though. Two towers first and a shop. This expansion is being delayed severely. Lala had reminding me of Sonic here. Super Davai. Very aggressive. A player's forces Did not research attack. Ultra Vision yet, surprisingly. Wants to squeeze every little thing into army that he can. Thank you, TTV Big Daddies, for the first time sub. Welcome. Archmage can't get to the shop. This is a tough game for 40, man. We got APs now coming. One minute until that one's finished. Once it is, things get a lot tougher. One Arcane Tower in the back. Guard Tower coming. This Guard Tower is going to be a big help. But the fact that the Archmage can't partake, can't use his DPS, is a big problem. Ooh. Summons a Watch Elemental finally. Again, the Keeper is out of mana. Now the Archmage is fairly safe. We see a lot of peasants going down. Shadow Melt can also be used here. There's no detection on the human side. Ooh, that's a lot of peasants falling. One Archer finally found as the return kill. Great Wisp positioning. These two APs finishing will be a problem. As I'm pretty sure there's no defend, right? Yeah, no way there's defend. Oh, the Town Hall almost finished, but not quite. And these APs could certainly take out these Guard Towers, potentially. Oh, the Keeper doing a great job cancelling healing on three units. Wonderful. Lawlight is playing a great match here so far. Comes in again, cancel it once more. Lawlight knows very well. There's two Regent Scrolls in the shop. Now that both have been used, they're going to be on cooldown for quite some time. And there we go. Both APs running into, or, well, rather, slowly moving into position to take out the guard tower, and I think 40 might just be dead here. He's trying to reinforce with militia and footies. But Lola has such a strong force here. And he's got the wisps nearby to repair the APs, also very important. These footies are taking so much damage, this is a very effective meat grinder. Lola getting the minced meat ready for the burger that is the delicious follow-up to this push. Fortitude, so far, getting outplayed pretty hard, but it is a best of five. There is still, perhaps, potential for a comeback, maybe even in this game. Lawlight is not transitioning, he's stuck on tier one, he's probably gonna get this expo, but we have seen humans being able to stabilize on one base. But this expansion certainly has to be given up, Ooh, a lot of peasants, very hurt. Regent scroll. Regent scroll? Regent scroll? Oh, 40 missed the Regent scroll on the peasants. It's kind of a big mistake. He is now teching, though. As I pointed out earlier, Huntress is very good early on, but will fall off like a brick in the mid game. So, if Fortitude can stabilize with two heroes and tier 2 tech, maybe he can still win this, but at the moment, of course, he's still pretty far behind. 
Olight also starting to tech, but his tier 2? A lot slower than the opponent's. Player's forces are under attack. One Huntress finally goes down. It's of course also going to be hard to heal up these Huntresses. Olight probably is going to have to invest into a heal scroll, maybe even two, or an Alchemist maybe? It's not easy to properly transition out of Huntresses, but Lawlier does it very, very well. I've seen him do it plenty of times. Alright, this time the Regent Scroll and the AM fully runs through. He's gonna be healing up. Oh, and Lawlier, he's not gonna try to transition too much. He's gonna continue to push and try to crack the main as well. Shop's gonna be coming, Clarity soon to join, more damage for the Huntresses. What's he gonna use his tier 2 for? Could go for a Pit Lord maybe. Reign of Fire Siege. Or Tinker. Alright, Lolai doesn't want to try to transition at all with these Huntresses. It is all in. Juice to the gills. Ready to look for a decision. Lots of militia called. One AP cancelled. Oh no, not cancelled! And that was the level up for the Archmage. Big mistake by Lawlight. Not cancelling the AP. Very painful here for him. This could even be a game losing mistake, honestly. One AP does finish though. The militia are taking a lot of damage. Some wisps missing. This is another mistake by Lawlight. Not bringing more wisps for the repair. That means this AP also falls. Fortitude perhaps coming back. Keeper level 4 has another entangle soon. But two APs have arrived. The third one is finishing. Oh, he could cancel the Sanctum. Lawlight, if he sees it, or he just wants to go for the altar. Maybe he just wants to try to cancel this Blood Mage. But I don't think he will be able to. Blood Mage and Siphon is probably going to be the choice here. And then just rely on mass water elementals. Catches a rifle with the entangle. That's probably going to be a kill, isn't it? But the water elementals are very strong here. While they're trying to catch the blood mage, he needs to transfer mana quickly. At least once, this AM has been juiced up. Everything for Lai is very hurt. It's going to be nighttime in a moment, then Lawlight can go to the shop and buy heal scrolls without any interference from the creeps. Now Wisps are coming in, ready to detonate against the Water Elementals, or to repair. Still a very close game. Oh! Double detonate. One Water Elemental falls, the second one is almost killed. And this Blood Mage might not come back. This is a big deal. Is there enough time to get the Blood Mage back a second time around? No. Altar taken out. I'm not even sure if he has space in the back, maybe here, to remake the Altar. Shop for the light so far hasn't done much. Still doesn't have ultra vision, right? It's kind of crazy. Ooh, look how many hunts he saved, though. Oh my goodness. Of course, there wasn't much juice in, but he can go for double heal scroll and this. This might be the game winning move. Could also go for the Ancient of Wonders, get some clarities. As the keeper is level 5, by the way. He's holding on to the skill point here. Forty's gonna have a rude awakening here as suddenly ten huntresses return. Oh my god. With double heal scroll. And there's the first. Come on! Oh. Oh. oh! I could feel that heal scroll. It felt like a nice cooling plunge into the water on a hot summer day. Just absolutely wonderful. And now, 40's well and truly getting overrun and getting killed. GG 2-0 for Lawliot. With a convincing performance. One or two small mistakes by Lawliot in here, but for the most part, very well played. And Fortitude, definitely making some errors. Not dealing with a Wisp early on was problematic, that led to level 2 quickly. 
And also, the build may have been not the right one. I feel like the instant expansion is better. Uh, but yeah, maybe, like I said, maybe he knows something that I don't. And Lawlight now has the chance to make this a perfect 3-0 if he wins the next map as well. As my net is crashed. That's not good. Please don't start without me, boys. Damn. They did start without me. Ah, crap. Yeah, that's sometimes a bug with Netties that uh, sometimes after a game finishes, Netties crashes, and then you occur, you appear offline to other people, and then um, sometimes they start without you. All right. Sorry about that, boys. Uh, for map three, we're going to have to do a restream of somebody else. But that should only be the case for one map. Come on, do you load, please? How much hate did you get for the patch video, Remo? Um, a decent amount. You know, like I was expecting. I mean, I, I know I knew some people were gonna be upset, but uh, it wasn't too bad, I guess. I got some encouraging words as well from some people. You know, balance is always a sore topic and people very quickly feel attacked and get defensive because uh, it's very hard to keep a very open mind and try to be objective about this. So I understand, you know, that people um, are a bit touchy on the subject. I guess it's natural. But yeah, it was, it was still okay, I guess. All right, like I said, unfortunately, they started the second, third game without me. So we're going to have to do a restream here of Infi. Wait, what's going on? Uh, yeah. If we could keep the chat focused on Warcraft 3, guys, that would be okay. That would be good. Uh, if you want to talk about politics and stuff, uh, use Twitter or maybe Reddit or something. Um, this is probably not the right place for it. So, um, Last Refuge as our second map where Lawlight is not playing a Beastmaster, by the way. Beastmaster, very good at pressuring early, especially in 2-base versus 2-base. But Fortitude loves playing 1-base pushes, and there the Beastmaster isn't that good. So I think I like this choice here quite a bit of going Keeper here for Lawlight instead.
Nobody plays Beastmaster anymore? Some people do. I saw it uh, a couple of weeks ago. What was I casting? I was casting some cup. Yeah, but a lot of humans have reacted, like I said, by not expanding, but rather playing one base push. And there the Beastmaster can look a bit underwhelming at times. Lawlight now expanding himself. And getting ready to creep. I wonder if he missed like that water elemental asset earlier. It kind of seems like maybe he did. Oh, thank you, Armin, with a 13, 15 month resub. And we also had Klabauta, Warcraft 3, with a 30 months. Thank you. Patch suggestions looked okay, but why would you nerf tanks even further? Oh my god, look at these Archmage items. Whoa, these Archmage items are absolutely bonkers. That is so crazy, holy shit. Uh, but yeah, regarding tanks, tanks are the most cancer BS in the whole game. And admittedly, they're not very strong right now, but they are so annoying and frustrating that I basically don't want to see them ever again. And... They are, or they at least used to be, one of the biggest deterrents for undead counter expansion. That's why. Thank you, Deathwing with a 15 month resub, and OptiSoft with a 10 month resub. Thank you, thank you. All right, 42 being aggressive as he likes to do. Big losses for Lawlight. Archer going down and the Berserker, but also gets the return kill on the Berserker with a lot of Treants here. And with that, the Keeper almost level four already, but so is the Archmage. Especially on level four, the mana region on the Archmage is gonna be crazy. Lawlight needs Dryads badly, I would say. MK second. And I think this isn't looking too bad for 40. He's gonna have a pretty scary force knocking on the front door soon. Lolaid has like no supply. Losing that Berserk was very painful for him. He's trying to get the kill to get level 4 and he just barely does. Has to TP out. Dude, these Archmage items are so nuts. <laughs> second hero from the altar. Is it a Demon Hunter? Oh, a Demon Hunter could work wonderfully here. Ancient of War in the wrong position, I think, is what Infi's pointing out there. Oh, detonates. Oh, and with that, maybe. Oh my god, he just barely saved it. He just barely saved the Entangled. That could be a game-winning play by Lawlight. And it's the Demon Hunter second against an MK second. It kind of seems like Lawlight is reading 40 like a book. It seems like he knew an MK would be coming and went Demon Hunter second for that reason. Is Foggy included here? Uh, no, Foggy is not invited or qualified to this tournament. Unfortunately. Uh, Happy is the only European. Happy's gonna be playing the third match of the day. Quick creeping here for the Demon Hunter. Almost an instant level 2 for him. The level 2 Treant's helping out a lot in creeping up quickly. MK also found a good item here. Big Invul Potion, but only level 1 Mountain King so far. Lawlight's starting to catch up in supply. The expansion is finally paying off. This early game looked a bit rough for Lawlight, but apparently he is recovering. But now, a Creepjack is inbound. Dryad's being pumped out. Needs the Abolish upgrade as well, though, and it seems like he doesn't have it yet. Team Hunter eats the Storm Bolt, but gets the level 2, now has Evasion and more stats, threatening the next mana burn. Oh, 
Didn't use it there. Slight mistake, perhaps. Mana burn. Okay, there we go. MK out of mana now, all of a sudden. Not so useful anymore. And Abolish finishes. And now the Watch Elements are going to have a much tougher time. Well, oh, the shop timing is beautiful by Lawlight. Entangle, target fire, takes out the priest, the rifle in the back. I don't know if that one was... Whoa, the Demon Hunter! What is he doing? Oh my god. Masterful Demon Hunter play there. Demon just barely survives, got, off a got out a crucial mana burn in the meantime. And this MK just simply is not looking too effective with all these mana burns. Fortitude going all in with his tower push. It looks a bit desperate, in my opinion. Clarity cancelled, though. Lolai taking his time. Going now into upkeep. More Moonwells coming. I would say Lolai looking really good today. One Dryad does finally fall. Demon starting to drop low, but I think there's a staff, right? Yes, there is. Perfectly bought as well. I think it's so cool how the top Night Elves really know how to spend their resources, right? Like, main Night Elves will go for a shop too early, Clarity's too early, Moonstone's too early, Staff's too early. Those are all good, but honestly, if you want, if you can, I mean, if you can, you want to delay them. And rather just make units first, if you can. Law had the shop when he needed it. He had the heal pot when he needed it. He had the staff when he needed it. Very, very cool. It's not over yet. A lot of drides here. Very hurt. Allied could really use a heal scroll. But the wisps come in for a mass detonate. Mass repair for the tower. But the tower does fall. More water elementals getting taken out. Of course, the abolish dealing with that easily. Keeper getting close to level 5, kind of. Staff. Oh, my God. Goodness. Did he die in the main? No. Oh, MK level 3 though, all of a sudden. He did quit quite a few Dryad kills after all. This game ain't over yet. Needs to burn quickly before the Stormbolt. Demon Hunter. Oh, can't save him this time. Wait a minute. I sort of misread this game, I guess. Seemed to me like Lawlight was starting to break the push. But that was not the case. Fortitude. With the good old-fashioned one base rifle push, even making it work with MK versus um, Demon Hunter. That's rare to see. But the Rifle Priest army is just so much better than the Dried army that it uh, did not matter in the end. I think losing the Berserker was the big problem there. I think if Lolai doesn't lose the Berserker, his uh, win probability like doubles. Well, not doubles. That's a bit too extreme. But it would have been a lot easier. That's faux shizzle. Alright, it won't be a quick, clean sweep here for Lawlight, that's for sure. Fortitude gets one map at the very least.
I understand that I, uh, you know, I just started the whole balance discussion, sort of, because I, I talked about my balance patch notes. It's such a difficult topic, like, to properly handle, because balance discussion very quickly devolves into balance whining, and that is, like, the most annoying thing in Warcraft 3 Twitch chat. But I kind of started talking about it. You know what I mean? Like... Talking about balance and finding a consensus is important, but it's so hard to find the right forum for it. Because most of the time, we don't want to talk about balance because it just ruins the fun of everything. But at the same time, in some capacity, we do have to talk about it. But in which capacity exactly? I don't know the answer to it, really. But yeah, I understand since I started the whole topic, if you guys want to give your viewpoint about balance, uh, feel free to do so. But probably in like half an hour or so, I will tell you guys to stop talking about balance. Because yeah, if we just whine about balance all day, it's uh, pretty pathetic and annoying and sad, you know. Balance is like Bruno, we don't talk about it. Wait, which Bruno? Do you mean the movie by Sasha Baron Cohen? All right, we go to map number four. Fortitude in the bottom left in the red. Lolai top right in the blue. Looking for a fast natural expansion creep. And very likely a keeper. Warden we have seen sometimes being played on this map. But doesn't seem to be too good. And especially for aggressive play of course. The keeper is way way better. This is still old autumn leaves by the way. So this camp here is a bit weirder. Here instead of here. And also the corner expansion is harder to creep. In my opinion, on new Northern Isles, humans should always expand in the corner. But yeah, this is old autumn leaves, so it's uh, it's a bit tougher. And this is old autumn leaves because uh, Nettie's hasn't updated the new version yet. But hopefully they will soon. Wait, can you make critters invisible? I don't think so, right? Because they're mechanical. Invis only works on uh, biological units. Right? I'm pretty sure. Footy scout. Gonna be punished right away. Oh, fortitude going for the special creep round. Going for the shop first. For an instant level 2. The cool thing about this is you can go for shop and then fall back, creep the green, and then creep the natural, and that's level 3. But it's a very slow expansion. But I guess Fortitude uh, perhaps doesn't even want to expand anyways, so in that case it might not matter. Can you drop mechanical critter with a zeppelin? Hmm. That's a good question. I've never seen it. But I mean, that's something that could be changed easily. Of course you can make critters invis. Invis. 
It doesn't count as a mechanical unit. I think it does. Because it doesn't leave a corpse. They don't leave corpses, Hippo. I think they're mechanical. A player's forces are under attack. Alright, he says you can make him invis, trust me. Bro, I'm not trustworthy enough of a person. I'm gonna test that later. Uh, gonna write that down right now. Critter invis. It seems like that's something that a Blizzard would have changed a long time ago, because there's so much possibility for abuse with that. Like, imagine you have 12 critters and you make them all invis, and you can just build invisible walls on the map. That's something you used to be able to do with shades, in case you remember. Well, I guess you can just make it with normal units, though. You can make him in this? Alright. Well, yeah, my explosion idea, like I said, I'm not sure how it would play out exactly, but it would be cool. I just want the critter to be useful, you know. And like I said, uh, I can certainly see someone coming up with a better idea. But I want the mechanical critter to be useful, because currently it's not. If you want it to be useful, give it more vision range. Dude, that's literally what I suggested. But if it has more move speed, then it's very, very obvious, right? Because it doesn't move like other critters. So that would be... It's also supposed to be deceptive. So I think giving it uh, faster move speed is actually counterproductive. Thank you very much, Alaska State Warcraft 3 team. Gifting us up to Art of Warcraft. How about flying mechanical critter? Ooh! Yeah, that's the one. Floduke, that's the one. They should have an ability to turn flying. And have more vision range. Yep. Floduke, that's a great idea. I'm gonna write that down right now. I haven't talked about the game much. I'm just thinking about critters right now. Alright, anyways, uh, it's a keeper Naga push. It's just one base, one base. Fortitude was refusing to expand early, and Lawlight uh, took that invitation for a one base game. Blood Mage, ooh, almost going down. Instead, it's the Naga getting surrounded. Lawlight has to pull the TP to save the second hero. But in one base, one base scenarios, normally we expect the Nile to be favored, especially if they're going tier 3, which Loyalite is, with Math Archers. No Ancient of Lore yet. One or two Mountain Giants could also be a big help here. Archer gonna get picked off. This, of course, uh, a rather frail unit. It's the mass orb strat, boys. 
Keeper, Naga, Podum, lots of Orb of Venom. No Mountain Giants at all, right? But we do have marksmanship now. These archers doing a lot of damage with that. Yeah, it's true actually. If the mechanical critter could turn flying, then some armies can't attack it at all. Or if it's over the trees. Oh, Blood Mage will go down now. We also had a one of the wind, the Archmage getting caught. He doesn't have a TP and he is dead. And that is GG. Fortitude was able to put up a bit of a fight and didn't drop out 0 3 here, but I think Lawlight clearly still, all things considered, the better player and does take the victory three to one and we'll be moving on to the main stage oh, the camera froze again today something's a bit off i don't know what it is